Important instructions. To use the MAT-1500 Pro Tuner correctly and safely, before use, please carefully and thoroughly refer to the Tuner Operation Manual and this video. In particular, to the content related to the connection of tuner control cables, because improper operation causes serious damage to the tuner. Now we take the ICOM IC7300 transmitter as an example and show how to use the general mode of the MAT1500 Pro tuner. The general mode means that the tuner isn't connected with the transmitter by control cables and can't detect the model of the transmitter. Users can only operate the MAT1500 Pro tuner manually. In the general mode, the tuner can work with transmitters of all models. They don't need to be connected by cables. The tuner only needs to be connected with a DC power cable to be powered by an external power supply. First, we connect the tuner with a 13.8 volts 1 ampere external power supply by the provided power cable. Then, connect the PTT control cable. We use an RCA control cable to connect the PTT output socket of the transmitter and the PTT input socket of the tuner, and then use another cable to connect the PTT output socket of the tuner and the PTT input socket of the amplifier. The PTT control cable is connected. For some transmitters, there is no independent PTT signal output socket. The PTT signal of these transmitters are integrated in other sockets. For such transmitters, you need to lead the signal out of these sockets and connect it to the PTT in socket of the tuner. The PTT control cable also has a connection that does not go through the tuner. Connect directly from the transmitter to the amplifier. This connection requires only one control cable, but has one disadvantage. If you forgot to switch the amplifier from OPR state to STBY state before starting tuning, the RF signal of about 10 watts output by the transmitter will be amplified to hundreds of watts by the amplifier. The high energy signal will be input into the tuner in tuning, and the tuner will be damaged immediately. Therefore, we recommend the connection of two lines. Finally, connect the coaxial cables. First, we connect the cable of the antenna with the socket antenna 1 of the tuner. Of course, we can also connect it with the antenna 2. Next, we use an RF cable to connect the socket RFN of the tuner with the output socket of the SWR meter, namely the socket antenna. If you do not use a SWR meter, connect this RF cable with the output socket of the amplifier. Then use a second RF cable to connect the input socket of the SWR meter with the output socket of the amplifier. We choose antenna 1 as the RF output socket of the power amplifier. Then, connect the input socket of the amplifier with the antenna socket of the transmitter. Now, we've completed the connection of all cables. When the tuner is turned on, it automatically enters the general mode if it detects that no control cable is connected with it. Compared with the special mode, the general mode is more complicated in operation, as there are more matters needing attention. It is not as convenient as the special mode. However, it is suitable for all transmitters. This is how to connect cables when the MAT-1500 Pro Tuner works in the general mode. This is an ICOM IC7300 transmitter. Let's use it to show how to use the MAT-1500 Pro Tuner in the general mode. The tuner is independently powered by an external power supply and isn't connected with the transmitter by control cable. When started, the tuner will automatically set to general mode. The rightmost power switch will work. Turn on the power of the tuner.
the general indicator on the left is on, which means that the tuner has automatically set to the general mode. Antenna 1 and Antenna 2 are used as switches and indicator lamps of antennas. Turn on the power of the linear amplifier. Then turn on the power of the transmitter. Now we show how the tuner works. First, switch the amplifier to the standby state. In the state, the amplifier won't amplify the RF power from the transmitter to avoid the damage to the tuner. During tuning, the maximum allowable input RF power of the MAT1500 Pro Tuner is 15 watts. Usually, it ranges from 5 watts to 10 watts. The recommended power is 10 watts. Excessive power will damage the tuner. Now let's look at the transmitter. The current band is 80 meters. We set the output RF power of the transmitter to 5 watts to 10 watts. Here we set it to 10 watts. Notice that the maximum power can't exceed 15 watts. Set the mode to FM. All are to enable the transmitter to output a stable RF carrier. After all are set, now we start a tuning cycle. Press and hold the Tune button of the tuner for more than one second and then release it. Now the button Tune is flickering. We need to press the PTT button of the transmitter within five seconds and keep pressing it to enable the transmitter to output a stable RF carrier. Then the tuner starts a tuning cycle. The tuner is in tuning. Soon, the tuning is finished. Release the PTT button of the transmitter. The transmitter stops transmitting the carrier. At the time, the lamp tune of the tuner is on, which means that the tuner has been successfully matched with the antenna and set to the online state. Let's check the current SWR. The SWR is relatively ideal. We set the mode of the transmitter to the mode we need. If the band is 80 meters, the mode should be the LSB mode. Then set the transmitting power to what we need. Now, notice that the output power depends on the power you want your amplifier to output and the gain of the amplifier. For example, this amplifier has a very high gain. The amplifier can output hundreds of watts of power if the transmitter outputs 5 watts, driving power to it. So, you can set the output power of the transmitter according to the driving power that your amplifier needs. Now we activate the amplification function of the amplifier. Set the amplifier to the operate state. Now it can transmit normally. Let's check the output power of the amplifier and the SWR of the tuned antenna system. We set the power level of the SWR meter to 300 watts. All, all. We can see that the current RF power of the amplifier is about 200 watts and the SWR is also very ideal. This is how to operate the MAT1500 Pro Tuner in the general mode. Now we switch the frequency to the brand of 40 meters and demonstrate it again. We start a tuning cycle again. Step 1. Switch the amplifier to the standby state. Step 2. Change the output power and mode of the transmitter. Set the power to 10 watts and change the mode to FM, CW, or FSK so the transmitter can output a stable carrier. Step 3. Start a tuning cycle. Press and hold the button Tune for more than one second. The button Tune starts to flicker. Then keep pressing the PTT button of the transmitter. Release the PTT button after the tuning is finished. Step 4. Check the SWR after tuning. If it meets the requirements, continue the operation. Step 5. Restore the transmitter to the previous mode and set it to the power level you need. Step 6. Change the state of the amplifier from standby to operate. Now we have completed the tuning and the transmitter can transmit. Let's have a try. All. 
we can see that the output power of the amplifier has reached 250 watts. The above is how to use the MAT1500 Pro Tuner in the general mode. Every time after we change the frequency of the transmitter and the SWR needs to be adjusted, we need to conduct the above operation. It is more difficult to operate the MAT1500 Pro Tuner in the general mode than in the special mode. If you don't use an amplifier but only use a transmitter and a tuner, you can operate them in the same way as above but only need to neglect the operation of the amplifier.